It's midnight and you're tuned in to Nightline with me, Anita Wu. The top stories. AG's report, Felda faces financial strain, records over 1 billion ringgit net loss. And Court of Appeal acquits Tansri Muhammad Isa Samad of corruption charges. Our headlining story. The Court of Appeal has unanimously allowed former Felder Chairman Tanzri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad's appeal against his conviction and sentence for allegedly receiving about 3 million ringgit in kickbacks for approving the purchase of a hotel in Kuching 10 years ago. Justice Datuk Vazir Alam Maidin Mira, who led a three-member bench, said the High Court had committed an appealable, an appealable error that warranted intervention. Other judges who heard Isa's appeal were Justices Datuk Ahmad Zaidi Ibrahim and Datuk S.M. Komati Supia. Vazir, who read the broad grounds of judgment, said the prosecution presented two different narratives of their case and the benefit of the doubt should be given to the appellant. In 2021, Justice Datuk Muhammad Nazlan Muhammad Ghazali, now in the Court of Appeal, found Isa guilty of nine corruption charges involving 3.09 million ringgit. Isa was sentenced to six years in prison and fined 15.4 million ringgit. Meanwhile, Mohamed Issa, who is also former UMNO vice president, hinted that he might make a political comeback after being inactive for years. Only thing is what we are subjective. Lah. Jadi boleh masuk, boleh tidak, bergantung pada keadaan. Kalau keadaan baik, kerana memerlukan, saya menyertai. Kalau tidak, sebagai penyokong parti, itu saya tak ubah. Kes pun pun habis lagi. Kes pun pun habis lagi. Dia ada raya ruang. Tuan Yuan, jadi saya... Uh, tak dapat menentukan sama ada saya akan terus berhubung. Tapi yang pasti, saya adalah penyokong-penyokong UMNO yang tak setia. Isa said he was confident from the start of the court process, which had taken six years, would prove his innocence on the nine corruption charges. Meanwhile, Isa's wife, Wansri Bibi Shaliza Muhammad Khalid, said they had always known that he was not guilty of the alleged offences. <laughs> The cooperation between ASEAN and Australia holds vast potential for further enhancement, particularly in bolstering the ecosystem of micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMEs, in the Southeast Asian region. Therefore, Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim urges for the inclusion and engagement of businesses, especially MSMEs, to be expedited under the ASEAN-Australia-New Zealand Free Trade Agreement. Anwar highlighted five areas of interest for enhanced cooperation at the ASEAN Australia Special Summit in Melbourne on Wednesday. We see much potential for Australia's support for strengthening ASEAN's MSME ecosystem, particularly through digital transformation, capacity building, market access, sustainable practices, and enabling equitable participation. When delivering his remarks at the plenary session of the summit, Anwar also said that another focus area is energy transition, especially as Malaysia aims to achieve a just transition in technology sectors, including net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 under the National Energy Transition Roadmap and ETR. Other areas involve solidifying ASEAN-Australia connectivity, human capital development and facilitating Timor-Leste's transition to full ASEAN membership. Anwar also said he strongly encourages the expansion of cooperation in technical and vocational education and training TVET by incorporating new disciplines such as green technology, the fourth industrial revolution and artificial intelligence. The 2022 Auditor General's Report 2022, Elkan, have listed five federal agencies with surplus accounts totaling 49 billion ringgit in 2022. However, according to the report, several other agencies have liabilities exceeding their assets or had negative reserves. According to the report, out of 130 financial statements audited, the five agencies with surplus accounts are the Employee Provident Fund, EPF, Bank Negara Malaysia, the Public Sector Home Financing Board, LPPSA, Lembaga Tabung Haji and Bank Rakyat. 
The report indicated that the EPF had a surplus income of 35.72 billion ringgit, leading the government agencies with a surplus in 2022, followed by Bank Nagara Malaysia with 6.99 billion ringgit. LPPSA 2.6 billion ringgit, Lembaga Tabung Haji 1.93 billion ringgit, and Bank Rakyat 1.8 billion ringgit. Meanwhile, the Federal Land Development Authority, FELDA, has emerged as a federal agency reporting the highest deficit at 1.01 billion ringgit. The report revealed that FELDA's expenditures in 2022 amounted to 1.947 billion ringgit, surpassing its income of 942 million ringgit, which was further offset by an increased impairment of 742 million ringgit, resulting in a current deficit of 1.005 billion ringgit. The report also listed four federal agencies out of 130 which have recorded higher liabilities compared to their assets. They are the Malaysian Highway Authority, LLM, with a liability asset difference of 392 million ringgit, Prima Corporation Malaysia, 125 million ringgit, Ex Service Men Affairs Corporation, or Perhebat, 13 million ringgit, and Perbadanan Perwirahata Malaysia, 7 million ringgit. A total of 130 financial statements of federal agencies were audited, with aspects such as current account balances, assets and liabilities, grants received from federal agencies, liabilities and investments looked into. The AJ report on the federal agencies' financial statements for 2022 is accessible at the National Audit Department's website after it was presented at the Dewan Rakyat on Wednesday. Malaysia has prevailed in a legal dispute against the European Union, EU, concerning the Delegated Act, which discriminates against palm oil biofuels produced from the country. The final report, released by the World Trade Organization, WTO, on March 5th, affirmed that the EU Delegated Act, which restricted palm oil biofuels, is discriminatory. In a statement, Plantation and Commodities Minister Datuk Sri Johari Abdul Ghani said the WTO's ruling validates Malaysia's assertions of discrimination, providing vindication for the country's efforts to seek justice for its biodiesel traders, companies and employees. He further mentioned that the WTO report criticises the EU for its use of indirect land use change to ban palm oil fuels and its approach to notifying and consulting with other economies when introducing new trade measures. The minister noted that the Malaysian government will closely monitor the EU's changes to its regulations to bring them in line with the WTO's findings and pursue compliance proceedings if necessary. Police will make data on road accidents available daily as part of government efforts to raise awareness of rising deaths on the road. Transport Minister Anthony Locke said that with this data, he hoped all media outlets would publish the statistics to increase awareness about the high number of road fatalities. Speaking to the media and parliament, Locke said the decision was made at a cabinet committee meeting on road safety and traffic, chaired by Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Zaid Hamidi on Wednesday. According to Locke, road accidents ranked fourth highest as the leading cause of death in the country, with 6,443 fatalities a year. Dan purata 18 kematian akibat kemalangan jalan raya setiap hari. Bersamaan setiap 80 minit ada seorang yang meninggal dunia oleh kerana kemalangan jalan raya. Daripada jumlah ini, hampir 2 per 3 adalah kemalangan yang melibatkan motosikal. Iaitu 4,480 kematian daripada jumlah 6,443 disebabkan oleh kemalangan motosikal. He also stressed that the World Health Organization had ranked Malaysia 126 out of 175 countries when it came to deaths by road accidents. The government is to spend 50 million ringgit on the expansion of special bus lanes and the purchase of 100 demand responsive transit or DRT vans in the Klang Valley starting September. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said congestion on several roads in the country had reached critical levels, including at Jalan Bukit Bintang, Jalan Kuching and Jalan Sungai Besi in the city. Ahmad Zahir, who chairs the Cabinet Committee on Road Safety and Traffic Congestion on Wednesday, said studies showed that special bus lanes on Jalan Ampang and Genting Klang since July 3rd had saved passengers' time of up to 18 minutes for bus journeys. He said the committee also agreed to extend the bus lane to Jalan Klang Lama starting in June. He added that the committee was studying the feasibility of bus lanes at Jalan Churas from Taman Kono to Jalan Pudu and the Federal Highway from the Kuala Lumpur city centre to the Shah Alam interchange.
The committee, he said, had decided to implement a new dispersal system in stages for critical congested locations after receiving information from the police, Kuala Lumpur City Hall and the Public Works Department. He said the government had also introduced contraflow routes to help traffic congestion at peak hours, adding that a Malaysian Road Safety Research Institute study showed that 88% of highway users agreed that contraflows were effective in reducing traffic congestion. On the transit vans, Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said DRT is a form of shared transport where vehicles alter their routes on each journey based on demand without using a fixed timetable. Influencer marketing, social commerce, how is the advertising industry evolving amidst emerging trends for sustained relevance? And in the era of digitalization, what strategies are advertisers employing to stay competitive? Money Matters from the Advertising World Congress with Sasan Saidi of the International Advertising Association this Saturday at 5 p.m. on TV Tiga and stream on Tonton. Malaysia's property transaction value hit a new record of 196.8 billion ringgit, with 399,000 transactions last year, up 9.9 percent from 2022. Second Finance Minister Datu Sri Ami Hamza Azizan said the positive growth trend was driven by higher transaction values in all subsectors. Sektor hartanah negara dijangka akan meneruskan momentum pemulihan sekalipun global. Kajian Madani Belanjawan 2024 terus menyuntikan berterusan untuk pembangunan sektor hartanah negara. In his speech to the launch of the property market report, he added the number of unsold residential properties had also declined to 26,000 units worth 17.7 billion ringgit. This, namely the residential, commercial, industrial, agricultural and development land and others compared to 2022. A more vibrant performance was also recorded for newly launched residential units, which increased by 4.4% to 56,000 units with better sales performance of 40.4%. Up next on Nightline, Zionist violence continues as Israeli attacks kill 86. News from the Foreign Front when we return, don't go away. Ana, dah habis? Tak sempat nak tengok. Drama TV3 ya, eh, Mak? Tengok je lah, tonton. Telefon nak buat? Meh, telefon Mak. Mula-mula Mak buka tonton, lepas tu tekan sign up here untuk buat akaun baru. Isi nombor telefon, email dengan password. Masukkan nombor TAC dan siap. Ya, senang je. Jadi tengok dah sah. Boleh lah. Eh, dah drama Mak tu. Baru pukul 10 malam kan? Mestilah kena tengok telefilm setiap Jumaat di TV3. Maju berkancing peniti 1 Mac. Hantu Karaoke 8 Mac. Iman ke syurga 15 Mac. Tragedi Balik Kampung 22 Mac. Makbul 29 Mac. Kenapa bukan orang lain? Ali filem yang menarik setiap Jumaat 10 malam di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui tonton. Mereka hanya ada tujuh hari untuk menyempurnakannya. Are you with me? Oh, yeah. Let's bring it in! Come on! Let's do it! Mengubah mimpi menjadi realiti dalam satu misi membina semula rumah yang baru. Beautiful village we're making. Got the custom Thailand. Happens yeah, to go like in right now. Love it! Looking good! Extreme Makeover Home Edition setiap Sabtu 12.30 hari. Stream sekarang di Tonton dan di TV3. We're back with news on the foreign front. The Palestinian Health Ministry in the Strip announced in a statement on Wednesday that at least 86 people were killed and 113 others injured in Israeli attacks in the last 24 hours. A number of Palestinian civilians were killed and others were injured earlier after Israeli forces bombed a house in Deir al-Bala in the central Gaza Strip. According to the ministry, many victims are still trapped under rubble and on the roads. Rescuers are still unable to reach them. 
Zionist forces then continued their intense bombardment in the towns of Hamad and Bani Sahaila, along with other areas in northern Khan Yunis, killing scores of Palestinians, including women and children. Meanwhile, calls to allow more aid into the Gaza Strip grow louder as health officials report more deaths from malnutrition and dehydration. Meanwhile, Hamas on Wednesday said it was pressing on with efforts to secure a ceasefire in Gaza with Israel, despite the absence of Israeli negotiators from talks in Egypt. In a statement, Hamas said they are showing the required flexibility in order to reach a comprehensive cessation of aggression against the Palestinian people. However, the occupation is still evading the entitlements of this agreement. The deal presented to Hamas would free some hostages captured by Hamas members on October 7th, while aid to Gaza would be increased to try to avert famine, as hospitals treat acutely malnourished children, and Hamas would provide a list of all the hostages held in Gaza. Negotiators from the Hamas, Qatar and Egypt are in Cairo trying to secure a 40-day ceasefire in the war, in time for the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan, which begins early next week. China accused the United States of using the Philippines as a pawn in the South China Sea on Wednesday as hostilities between the two Asian nations escalate over their territorial dispute in the region. China said it took control measures against Philippine ships as illegal intrusion into waters, it claims, as well as accusing a Philippine ship of intentionally ramming a Chinese one. Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mao Ning said that China urges the United States not to use the Philippines as a pawn to stir up trouble in the South China Sea. The statement came after Manila summoned a Chinese representative on Tuesday and said China Coast Guard vessels had caused two collisions with Philippine boats and water cannoned one of them during a resupply mission. Meanwhile, Southeast Asian and Australian leaders warned against actions that endanger peace in the South China Sea following the fresh confrontations between Beijing and the Philippines. India police have arrested five more men in connection with the gang rape of a Spanish tourist, taking the total detained to eight. According to authorities, police are currently forming a strong case against the suspects and said that any of the men, if found guilty, would face strict punishment. Local media reported that a cheque of US$12,000 has been handed to the couple as compensation under a victim compensation scheme. The attack on the woman who was on a motorbike trip with her husband took place last week in Dumka district where the couple was camping. However, with cases getting stuck for years in India's clogged up criminal justice system, convictions still remain rare. Coming up after this quick break, Tang Jie, Yi Wei, cruising to French Open, second round. Sports right after this breather. Stay tuned. Money Matters is back with a new season. Your key insights into finance. Money Matters. Every Saturday, 5 p.m. Only on TV Tiga and stream now on Tonton. Ciri-ciri wanita hebat dalam cereka rama TV Tiga. Wanita yang bangkit demi marwah. Dia akan jadi isteri yang baik untuk you. 
Jangan menyesal. Kita nak kena bersyukur. Kasih wanita yang mendahulukan keluarga. Buat hari-hari doa yang baik-baik. Satu destinasi untuk semua tali filem wanita hebat hanya di Cerai Karama TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui Tonton. Masyarakat Malaysia rata-ratanya gemar makan makanan pedas dan manis-manisan. So, janganlah macam, okey, saya tak nak makan manis, saya tak nak makan manis. So, tak ambil langsung. At one point, kita dah fed up, kita akan uh, makan je lah. Adakah anda penggemar makanan bergoreng ataupun minum kopi secara berlebihan? Okey, besok kita review pukul apa? Ha, kita orang akan puasa sampai kita orang makan untuk review tu je. Terlebih makan, perbincangannya dalam Hello Doctor, Ahad 5.30 petang di TV3 dan juga stream di Tonton. We're back with sports news now, badminton. Mixed doubles pair Chen Tangjie and Dou Yiwei lived up to their billing by advancing to the second round of the 2024 French Open after defeating compatriot Stan Kianming Lai Peijing on Wednesday. The duo, ranked ninth in the world, took just 42 minutes to overcome Kiang Meng and Pei Jing with a straight sets victory of 21-15 and 21-18 in the first round match. The victory marks Tang Zhe Yi Wei's second victory over the Malaysian professionals after the Malaysia Open in January. Awaiting them in the round of 16 are the fourth seeded pair from China, Feng Yang Zhe, Huan Dongping. Meanwhile, three more Malaysian representatives, namely men's single Li Zizia and women's doubles pair Perli Tan M. Tina and Vivian Hu Lim Shu Sen, will also be in action in the first round later on Wednesday. Moving on to football now, the 2023-24 AFC Champions League. Yokohama F. Marinos will take a 2-1 lead into the second leg of their quarterfinal against Shandong Taishan after Chen Pu's late strike, which kept the Chinese hosts' hopes of a last fourth place alive. Anderson Lopez put Marinos in front seven minutes into the game after the striker capitalized on the inability of the Shandong defense to clear to slot his shot past Wang Dale into the bottom corner. Marinos doubled the advantage 21 minutes from time when Jan Matios calmly placed the ball into the net from the edge of the area. Shandong, however, managed to pull one back when Chen Pu hit an acrobatic right foot effort beyond Willem Pop a minute into stoppage time to keep the tie in the balance. The two teams will meet again in Yokohama next Wednesday, with the winners meeting either K-League side Jumbok Hyundai Motors or Alsan Hyundai in the semi-finals next month. <laughs> In another match, Al Hilal have one foot firmly planted in the last four after a 2-0 win over fellow Saudi club Al Ittihad in the first leg of their quarter-final. Al Hilal opened the scoring five minutes before halftime when Alexander Mitrovic scored from the spot after he was brought down by Ittihad's Madallah Al Olayyan. Salim Al Dawsari then added Hilal's second two minutes later when Malcolm was released down the right by Ruben Neves' incisive pass from deep and the Brazilian centered for the current Asian Player of the Year to sweep home past goalkeeper Abdullah Al Mayouf. With the result, four-time former champions Al Hilal, who have contested four of the last six finals, will be firm favourites to advance when Al Ittihad hosts the second leg in a week's time. Still to come on Nightline, missing single mum Bella's skeletal remains found. Stay tuned. Guys, lagu manakah yang menjuali carta Top 20 Music Music 39 minggu ini? Juga dua lagu perjalanan baru. Wahai bunga dahli Music Music 39 Ahad ini jam 12 tengah hari di TV3 dan stream HD secara langsung di aplikasi Tonton. Jom sambut Ramadan ini melalui rancangan-rancangan penuh ilmu dan hikmah istimewa di TV3. Dengan penuh iman dan wahdi sabar, penuh keimanan bersungguh-sungguh, ikhlas, khusyir. Di luar Ramadan, Allah turun ke langit dunia pada setiap malam iaitu sepertiga malam. Mungkin satu ketika akan memberikan padah pada kita kalau kita tidak mengawal. Saksikan di TV3 dan stream sekarang melalui tonton.
Bukan rahsia lagi. Tata juara anugerah juara lagu 38 sudah pun diketahui. Tanya kepada semua finalis atas persembahan anda di AJL paling ikonik. Stream secara eksklusif ditonton dan alami semula kegemilangan Musical Verse AJL 38. Teruskan bersama kami untuk AJL yang akan datang. Kerana juara tidak terhenti di sini. We're back with more news on the local front. In Pera, an elderly man was remanded to assist in the investigation of the murder case of his brother and sister-in-law in a palm oil plantation area near Pantai Remis, Manjung, on Tuesday. The remand order until March 12th was issued by Magistrate T. Kavita at the Sri Manjung Magistrate's Court on Wednesday. The 61-year-old suspect was detained after the police received information about the incident at 3.30pm on Tuesday. The bodies of the 74-year-old husband and wife were found in the palm oil plantation with head and facial injuries caused by being struck with a machete. Manjung District Police Chief ACP Noordin Abdullah said initial investigations found that prior to the incident, a dispute over land ownership in the plantation occurred between the victims and the suspect, who is also the younger brother of the male victim. Police have confirmed that several bone fragments were found at the location where the remains of 32-year-old Bella or Mila Shamila were discovered at the end of last month in an abandoned house in Jalan Besar Tungkang Pecah, Batu Pahat, Johor. The discovery of the bones believed to be human remains was made at 11.30am on February 28th after authorities were alerted by the public. Batu Pahat Police Chief Assistant Commissioner Ismail Dola said following the discovery, the forensic team from the Johor Police Contingent Headquarters was called in to assist in the investigation at the discovery site. Upon examination, the forensic team found two bone fragments believed to be part of the thigh, two bone fragments of the calf and two bone fragments of the shin at the location. All the bones found were sent to the Johor Chemistry Department for DNA comparative analysis. Police are still waiting for the results of the analysis report from the chemistry department and the process is expected to take about a month. Kongres Ekonomi Bumi Putra Pemangkin ke arah transformasi pembangunan ekonomi Anjakan pemerkasaan Bumi Putra lebih adil, saksama dan inklusif Kupasannya dalam soal rakyat Bersama Timbalan Perdana Menteri Datuk Seri Ahmad Zahid Hamidi Sabtu 9 Mac, 5.30 petang, hanya di TV3. Juga stream di Tonton. Over in Sabah, about 180 people were left homeless after a fire raised 45 houses in a water settlement in Tanjung Batu Laut Log Pond in Tawa on Wednesday. No casualties were reported, but it was a tragedy for the victims nevertheless to lose their homes less than a week before the start of Ramadan and the reopening of the new school year. The Tawal Fire and Rescue Department confirmed receiving a call regarding the fire at 2.31pm and firefighters took about two hours to control the fire. All 45 wooden houses were completely destroyed, according to the department. Three wooden bridges connecting about 300 houses in the village were also raised by the fire. In closing, dancing light beams and colourful digital displays were among the dazzling array of artwork showcased at the UAE's annual Art Dubai event. Now in its 17th iteration, the fair exhibits works from more than 120 galleries across the world, featuring digital, contemporary and modern works. Let's take a look as Nightline draws to a close this time around. With that, I'm Minnie Tabu. Thank you for tuning in and be well, Malaysia. <laughs>